So guys, what industries do Google Ads tend to work well for or what niches? Now, I've worked with a huge range of niches, pretty much everything under the sun from an adult underwear brand to taps to outdoor furniture to electronics, beauty, fashion, uh, jewelry. Really, Google Ads will work to some extent for all of these brands. There are some that it works for better than others though. So I like to split it up into, is your product highly visual or fashion driven or focused or um, does it have something, a problem that it's solving or is it used for something specific that people are searching for? The second one, better for Google Ads. If it's more like fashion driven, image driven, it's not clear what it does or, or it'll be difficult to be able to search for it. So if it's something that, you know, it's a brand new product, there's probably not gonna be any search volume for it. Google isn't gonna work quite as well for that. Again, highly visual things. It's not saying you won't get any sales from Google, particularly if you're a big, big brand. People are searching for these brands on Google. Uh, and even they're searching for things like clothing, shoes, all of these things. And you can make great listings and sell products. But just generally speaking, that if you're solving a particular problem, uh, or it's something very specific that someone's looking for, like a particular laptop, you know, a 13 inch Asus ROG gaming laptop X model, that's perfect for Google Ads. Whereas those might work a little less so on social media ads because Google is high intent search-based marketing. We're trying to get people that are lower in the funnel. So branded search gets people right at the bottom of the funnel. So if you build a brand up through other avenues, Google's going to benefit. And so people that are running both types of ads do well. If I was starting out though, what would work well on Google? It would need to be high ticket. What do I mean by high ticket? The more expensive, the better. But I would say high ticket these days is really anything over $250, $500. If you can sell something that's $250, $500, if you can sell something that's two, three, four, five thousand, ten thousand, it, you leave yourself with a lot more, as long as you've still got an okay profit margin percent, you've got a lot more margin dollars there to play with to be profitable. And that's why like a lot of the time when I work with clients, if they're a high ticket product, I know I've got more opportunity and more chance of being successful at getting that client to do well, purely because I've got so much more margin to play with. You know, I can spend $100 to get a sale and they're still making thousands of dollars per sale. So that, that would be what I'd be looking for in a product. Can you make it work lower? Yes, yes you definitely can. But what happens there is there's less room for error and if you're a beginner, then you're making your life much harder. But if it is a product that has high volume, so there's a lot of searches or it has the potential for a lot of searches and you can generate you know, brand awareness through other avenues and they'll benefit Google, or you're making something better that people are already searching for, that can, that can do well on Google. But generally speaking, you know, high ticket. I also don't like things that tend to be high risk. So anything that people put into their bodies, baby, um, things that go into people's skin, things that have high elect electrocution potential, uh, cannabis products, things like that, unless you have a specialty in those and you know how to get around advertiser requirements, I probably wouldn't touch them as someone who's brand new. Um, high ticket is the way to go. And building on this, like, can you still drop ship products? Yes, as long as you have the margin, as long as you can ship things relatively quickly to people. Um, I've worked with a lot of drop shipping brands and still do that are doing really, really well. So you don't have to necessarily not be drop shipping to do well. Ideally, you want to have a brand around it um, because when you're drop shipping, you're really just playing arbitrage. Um, with a little bit of control over the product, not much, but really you should eventually look to transition and you know, buy stock, brand it, have your own inventory, which to be honest, brings a whole range of other problems themselves. Like you really need to sit down and do the math when you do those of, hey, am I actually making any more money by buying this in versus drop shipping? And sometimes when you're playing the game of cash flow is king, sometimes it is better to drop ship the product. So don't be scared of not drop shipping, but Realistically, these days, you're going to have to shoot really nice creative of things. So if you don't have that good creative, um, 
especially for things like TikTok style reels and things like that, you need to have like UGC and high quality creative. And to be honest, that's all I have always kind of stuck towards Google is the need for high creative is just so much lower. So it is easier for me to run a business in it. And I've just found I'm much better and quicker at getting results for people with it because I understand the process and it suits my personality and, and, and I kind of, I know what to do and what to expect. So, you know, as I've said, high ticket, as much profit in the product as possible. You can drop ship it. And to be honest, when you're starting, you probably do want to, particularly if you haven't tested it. And if not, buy a box, buy a pallet, buy something that you can afford and then test it and see how it goes. You know, is it expensive product to ship? That's another one. If the product is super expensive to ship and it's gonna to eat too much into your margins or it's gonna to take too long to get there or it's complicated, you know, it's dangerous goods, has battery, whatever it might be, Again, it's another factor that goes and works against you. And um, I'll try and release a checklist on this of what I would look at to, you know, how good is a particular product and is it scalable on Google? Or scalable is a whole nother story. So whether or not a product is scalable is going to rely on the number of available impressions or searches. So is there enough search volume? Again, the more the better, there's not a minimum. You can generate search volume through virality, through ads, through a number of avenues, and even just time, things build. And things uh, can come, you might be too early to a trend and it might do better down the track. Like you just, you just really don't know with some of these things. So the best thing you can do is try, but minimize your risk. Don't go and buy a whole, I, I knew a friend once who had this idea and he thought he would do a shaver shop um, type product, uh, but he'd do it it was toothbrushes. He thought he'd copy shaver shop but do it for toothbrushes. He went and bought an entire container of toothbrushes, tens of thousands of toothbrushes. And you know what ended up happening? They ended up getting chucked out because he couldn't sell them. There was no profit margin. On a one or two dollar product, how much profit margin do you have to spend on any form of advertising? You have none. That's the answer. Do not go and buy a whole container of something unless you're very sure. Have some bets like that paid off. Look at High Smile. They went and bought a whole container and yeah, it paid off. I mean, I don't know the full story of if they had pre-sold or tested it, but there's definitely success stories to people doing that as well, but they're not the norm. The norm is failing at that. So don't do that. It's, you want to minimize your risk and keep yourself in the game. And so even if you have to be offering Google Ads as a service while you do it, it's important. And, and, and actually choosing the right product is going to be the most important thing you do because even me, like I'm very good with Google Ads. I'm not saying I'm the best. I don't know. How could I possibly know? I'm good. I do try to do a good job. I know what I'm doing. I don't think that even myself could get away with marketing a bad product. So it doesn't matter how good I am. If the product's bad, people don't want it. No amount of marketing is going to fix that. And so that's why you need to spend the time in nailing the product and the market fit. Know, know who your ideal customer is. Like I know for my business what my ideal customer is and that's why I can get new customers because it's easy. If I didn't know them, I didn't know their pain points, what I'm solving, what the problems are, it would be much, much more difficult. So I hope this has kind of given you an overview as to what products and niches tend to sell well on Google. I like high ticket, I like high profit, I like easy to ship generally. I like things that aren't dangerous or ingestible, low risk. And uh, that should give you a pretty good starting point if you don't know. But otherwise, the strategies that I show uh, in my course, in YouTube, here, students, clients, the things I do work for any of those industries. That whole process that I have, it literally, you can apply it to anything. That's the beauty of it. And once you learn how to properly optimize things, then the sky's the limit with this stuff. And if you stick to it, and if you try and you learn more, product uh, research becomes a skill. That was my job in a previous life, was to actually select products for big multinational, multi big brand businesses. And uh, it, you get better at it. And, and to be honest, you fail as well. You fail in those businesses and you just need a plan to clear it and turn that money back into cash. So yeah, I hope this video has been enjoyable and you found it useful and uh, I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much.